we came across these wild dogs um, fairly early in the morning and they were literally pulling this impala apart uh, limb by limb. Really making quick work of this female impala. They must have killed it possibly half an hour before we got there and they'd already pretty much finished most of the carcass. And when they'd all sort of had enough, um, they began this interaction that uh, dogs normally do, sort of celebrating the, the kill. A lot of playing and jumping and just interacting, uh, strengthening those bonds, the success of, of them as a pack. They started all scent marking, uh, rolling on the ground, and uh, then each in turn urinating. There are three males in this pack and one female, and even the female as well, all sort of urinating in one place and then defecating. Um, a couple of them did that in exactly the same place. There was a whiteback vulture watching them, and a hyena. There's still a lot of meat in the carcass, and the hyena then took his turn It displayed quite an interesting behavior. The first thing that he went for were the, the legs of this impala, slicing through the skin that attached it to the carcass and then separating the leg and then literally just crunching the bone. Splitting the, the main leg bones and licking out the, the marrow. This guy was definitely after Mara and he knew that the dogs weren't able to access that. Quite interesting how they've evolved, an amazing amount of pressure in their jaws, allowing them to, I suppose, eat less, but of a much higher protein. When we began our climb, the weather wasn't too bad and the drive was quite enjoyable. As we got higher though, we could see the weather changing and it wasn't long before we were battling to see a few meters in front of us. It was only four o'clock when we reached the top but it seemed a lot later, as it was so dark and cold. The next day, we expected similar weather, but it was unbelievably clear. We had thought today we would have a look at the wetlands. The biggest difference was that the landscape had defrosted and transformed streams and rivulets covering the wetlands in front of us. We had come across tadpoles which were feeding on a dead toad. They were really digging into the soft flesh, the toad's misfortune giving opportunity and life to others. We managed to spot a few Drakensberg River frogs these tadpoles and frogs can withstand sub-zero temperatures, snow and ice. But what is interesting about them is that they are endemic to this Drakensberg Lesotho area. Another fine example of a species known only to be found in this specific region in the whole world.
Once in the wooded area on the island, I set up my hide and very quickly birds started to move around me. Black crowned night herons were much in evidence on the woodland floor. A juvenile black crowned night heron uh, also was walking around on the on the woodland floor and then took to a branch where it really just rested up and uh, did a bit of scratching. Looking around I saw several others, one of which was having a very good scratch. It began to make me feel itchy sitting in my hide. I was sitting in the, the, the leaf litter there and wondering what else was crawling around in there with me. For about two hours, I was kept company by a juvenile little egret that took up uh, residence on a fallen branch right next to my hide, just a couple of meters away. It seemed to be totally unconcerned by the camera uh, sticking out of the side of the, the hide. And uh, then glancing up, I saw there were two spot-billed pelicans. Never seen these before. A little cormorant landed in the tree right in front of it. And the cormorant itself is not a small bird, but it was absolutely dwarfed by the pelican. Quite amazing. The first wreck that we dived was actually an old seaplane and has been dubbed Jake's seaplane. The propeller still well and truly embedded in the, the reef with the one blade still sticking up and the whole propeller and engine has actually broken off from the main fuselage. It was these pontoons and floats that have enabled these planes to, to take off and land in the sheltered and calm bays and channels that you find in between these little rock islands. This aircraft is a 11 meter long reconnaissance aircraft. These particular planes were perfectly adapted to doing big sorties, getting information, perhaps refueling and returning to their base. Towards the end of the war, they were actually used as bombers as well as kamikaze aircraft. Moving down the, the wreck, you can see there's still some of the glass is even still intact in the cockpit. And as we move down towards the back of the aircraft, you can see that the whole tail has been ripped off and is obviously lying elsewhere. Two small nudibranchs moving up the fuselage and quite humorously having a little peer into the cockpit. It was a very nice dive, although quite a sad dive, just to kind of think about the people that were actually flying and were in this aircraft once it had hit the sea. Mm -hmm. 